Look up. See the antennas. Look up. See the antennas. All over the U.S., wireless companies are installing cell antennas in residential neighborhoods. Part of what are called Distributed Antenna Systems, DAS. These small but still powerful antennas are going up directly in front of homes and schools. Here in San Francisco, hundreds have been installed and hundreds more are planned. None of the 30 antennas in this video had a public review. None of the residents nearby were notified beforehand. Those residents who have fought back with lawsuits to protect their property values and their health have overwhelmingly lost to the wireless companies they have challenged. Although the city has fought for some rights to regulate such installations, they can't yet do so. Tacked on to utility poles, the wireless companies pay a mere pittance to the city for the privilege of installing these antennas, lowering property values, lowering property tax revenue for the city, and invisibly subjecting residents in their own homes to constant, unasked for, radio frequency microwave fields. You know when your cell phone is on. You know when your Wi-Fi is on. But a cell antenna outside your home is something you can't turn off. Epidemiological studies on people living within just a few hundred feet of big cell towers show elevated levels of cancer. Other bioeffects include sleep disruption, headaches, fatigue, dizziness. The power intensity of a cell antenna is all about how close you are. So being at a distance from a big antenna can be equivalent to being close to a smaller antenna. RF radiation is an environmental toxin, but it remains largely unregulated except for preventing extremely high exposures, the kind that actually heat up your flesh. Even as the mechanisms aren't fully understood, biological research clearly shows effects, including DNA damage, at much lower intensities. A 1996 law, the Telecommunications Act, prevents any concern for health effects being considered when cities regulate where antennas are sighted. Doctors and scientists all over the country are calling for biologically based standards for human exposure to microwave radiation. Last year, the World Health Organization declared this kind of radiation to be a possible carcinogen in the same category as lead or diesel exhaust. but action by our government to protect citizens lags far behind. No one in 1996 could have foreseen the level of saturation we live in today, some substantial proportion of it involuntary, as more and more cell antennas and wireless systems are deployed, piling exposure on exposure. A person's cumulative RF exposure may be one of the most important factors in whether or not they become ill, if data from studies on tumors and cell phone use is any measure. And who wants one of these in front of their home or in their backyard, as has happened in other municipalities, causing unwanted illness and health problems, generating anxiety for the future health of loved ones or oneself, making disruptive noise from the fan system on hot days, and ruining the view out the living room window. The 30 antennas in this video were found in an area of only three square miles of mostly residential neighborhoods in San Francisco.
In some areas, competing companies each install their own separate antennas within a block or two of other antennas. Doubling or tripling residence exposures. This is the cost of so-called seamless cell phone coverage. Do you think it's worth it?